hello everyone welcome back to my channel in this video let's talk about an important uh, uh, topic in uh, cement known as uh, hydration of cement so uh, before getting into hydration concept uh, all of us know uh, normal uh, cement does not have any reactive capacity or any binding capacity uh, just if you take uh, cement in your hands uh, and you put uh, sand and coarse aggregate no binding will take place so for the cement to attain its binding capacity we need to add water to it so basically hydration is defined as the chemical reaction that takes place in between cement and water so once cement starts reacting with water we have uh, products of hydration formed or what we call them as hydrated compounds and these compounds have the capacity of binding the materials together right that's what is called as hydration so in short we can define hydration as the chemical reactions that take place between cement and water so next coming to heat of hydration so if you observe at any time uh, once water is added to cement the reaction is exothermic means heat is evolved outside we can feel the heat that's called as heat of hydration so the amount of heat that is evolved uh, during the hydration process is called heat of hydration initially the heat of hydration will be very much high later on it will decrease and again as the days pass on by it keeps on uh, it it uh, it goes on the process will be there and one has to be careful with uh, controlling the heat of hydration so that's the reason we generally do the curing process so uh, if uh, generally this uh, heat of hydration is considered to be as an additive property of cement uh, so it's by default during the manufacture only this uh, property comes with the cement and you can calculate the heat of hydration from the expression a into capital a plus b into capital b plus c into capital c plus d into capital d where uh, h represents in that's on the left hand side in the expression represents heat of hydration capital a capital b capital c and capital d will represent uh, the values of our box compounds which are c3s c2s c3 and c4af uh, those small uh, letters a b c d which were the coefficients for capital a capital b capital c capital d they represent the contribution of 1% of that corresponding compound for heat of hydration so i told you uh, hydration is nothing but the chemical reactions that take place between cement and water here cement and water means in more technical sense it is the reaction between box compounds and water so the moment you add water to the cement the first compounds to get hydrated are your uh, c3s and c2s uh c especially c3s out of four bog compounds if you remember we have four bog compounds c3s c2s uh, c3a and c4af so c3s and c2s are responsible for strength uh, c3a is responsible for binding the particles together for binding the ingredients of concrete together and c4af is responsible for imparting uh, color as well as resistance towards sulfate attack right so uh, these four bog compounds react with water to form some different forms of hydrates which are respectively uh, calcium silicate hydrate which is uh, the reaction which is the product form by the reaction of c3s c2s with water next we have calcium aluminate hydrate uh, which is the product form by c3a reacting with water next we have calcium ferrite hydrate which is formed when uh, C4AF reacts with water and then we have calcium hydroxide this is an additional product of hydration so if someone ask you what uh, what are the number of products of hydration formed it is four products of hydration right which is uh, calcium silicate hydrate calcium aluminate hydrate calcium ferrite hydrate and calcium hydroxide so these are the chemical reactions uh, after balancing so you can observe from the first two chemical reactions where c3s and c2s are reacting with water molecules you got something called uh, c3s2h3 
so it is nothing but just CSH gel so I told you uh, C3S and C2S are responsible for strength contribution so uh, when they react with water we get CSH gel formation so this CSH gel formation helps in contributing the strength to the concrete along with the calcium hydroxide and heat uh, next you can see C3A reacting with water to give out CAH which is calcium aluminate hydrate which is responsible this gel is responsible for binding all the ingredients of the concrete together and next we have C4AF uh, which is the fourth bulk compound reacting with water to give you CFH uh, you can see uh, which is calcium ferrite hydrate which is responsible for the dark grey colour of the concrete and also to make the concrete resistant towards sulphate attack right so if you observe all the four chemical reactions you can see C3A tricalcium aluminate bow compound when it is getting hydrated it is giving highest heat of hydration around 880 kilojoules per kg and next highest heat of hydration is given out by uh, or given uh, during the hydration of C3S okay uh, tricalcium silicate and then later on C4AF and last the bow compound which is contributing to least heat of hydration is C2S or dicalcium silicate so you can see uh, respectively in this chart uh, uh, once the box compounds are reacting with water we can see the products of hydration formed and if you see out of these four reactions see now uh, both C3S and C2S are responsible for the formation of CSH gel but if you see here here uh, with, with, the, with the hydration of C3S the CSH gel formed is around 75 units uh, for when C2S is hydrating with water the CSH gel formed is around 99 units and you can see calcium hydroxide when C3S hydrates is 49 and calcium hydroxide when C2S hydrates is 22 so when we talk about strength criteria we are telling uh, CSH gel is responsible for strength so more is the CSH gel more is the strength of the concrete so you can see most of the CSH gel is due to the hydration of C2S and uh, uh, it also gives less amount of calcium hydroxide actually calcium hydroxide is not useful for us I'll talk about it uh, a minutes after a few minutes so one has to remember that C2S is the one which is contributing to greater formation of CSH gel so this is what I was talking so C3S is producing lesser quantity of CSH gel which is actually required but it is giving out more amount of calcium hydroxide which is not required uh, actually as I was telling calcium hydroxide is not a desirable product uh, in the concrete so this should be leached outside so why because uh, this uh, product when it remains uh, inside the concrete it makes your concrete uh, porous weak and uh, not durable that's the reason uh, we try to suppress the values of CaOH taken twice by addition of fly ash and silica fume or any other pozzolanic materials to avoid the bad effect of this calcium hydroxide in concrete and uh, this calcium hydroxide reacts with water sulfates present in water means if you are applying this concrete somewhere uh, where it is subjected to water this calcium hydroxide if it is not suppressed it will react with the water and it will try to form uh, calcium sulfate which further reacts with our uh, tricalcium aluminate finally causing decaying of concrete or deterioration of concrete that's the reason calcium hydroxide is always suppressed but we have only advantage of calcium hydroxide that since it is alkaline in nature it will try to maintain the pH of water around 13 in the concrete which reduces the effect of reinforcement corrosion. So next the other reaction which we observed was C3A with water, tricalcium aluminate with water. One has to remember that out of the four Bohr compounds the uh, obviously the immediate hydration is uh, by C3A. C3A once it comes into contact with water it will form uh, I mean its reaction is very very speed very very rapid uh, that's the reason uh, if you remember we are adding gypsum so I'll talk about it also so uh, 
C3A when it reacts with water it forms calcium or a calcium alumina hydrate which is CAH and this gel is the one which will bind all the raw materials of your concrete together. You have to remember there are two gels CSH gel which is responsible for strength and CAH gel which is responsible for binding the materials. There is no proper binding in between the materials if there is any segregation and bleeding obviously uh, that doesn't make a good concrete right yes uh, the next one is the last bore compound c4af uh, tetracalcium aluminoferrite when it is reacting with water it is giving out calcium ferrite hydrate uh, which we call cfh if you observe in the chemical reaction in addition to cah already and uh, this uh, product of hydration especially doesn't contribute to any strength for concrete uh, but it is the one which shows uh, a good uh, resistance towards attacks of sulfates than uh, other products of hydration. So if one has to use uh, concrete underwater, then you have to see that your cement is having good amount of C4AF, right? So as told earlier, C3A is reacting with the water very, very rapidly what we call flash sitting that's the reason we are adding gypsum if you remember in the manufacture of cement also we talked uh, without addition of gypsum the reaction between water and cement will be very very fast so to, in order to delay the setting time we are adding gypsum so in the sense what is what compound of cement is uh, reacting very fast with water means it is c3a so that's the reason uh, gypsum is added so once uh, your c3a uh, is reacting with water we are getting calcium aluminate hydrate this calcium aluminate hydrate reacts with gypsum thereby forming calcium aluminate trisulfate hydrate or calcium aluminate monosulfate hydrate so whatever the formation of calcium aluminate trisulfate hydrate we are getting the big one c c6 a s i uh, have put a star so that s represents already we are taking for s silica so here S represents, S star represents actually sulfur, H32. This big compound is called as ettringite. So ettringite is nothing but, it is the product formed when calcium aluminate hydrate reacts with gypsum. From where this calcium aluminate hydrate came? When C3A was reacting with water. So this ettringite will have a structure like needle, needles like structure. And last coming to structure of hydrated cement, uh, we can observe the structure of hydrated cement in two ways. One is uh, microscopically and other one is macroscopically. Say suppose uh, if you are uh, observing the concrete macroscopically, means with the help of your naked eye, if you are observing the concrete. So you have taken cement, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, water, you have mixed and you have prepared the concrete. So what are you able to see macroscopical view what are you able to see in the concrete we can see the cement uh, paste and we can see the aggregate paste correct means you can see the coarse aggregates you cannot uh, especially find sand why because already sand is mixed with your cement so you can find only two two phases one is your uh, motor phase and a coarse aggregate phase so that is when you are observing with your naked eye but when you are observing the same concrete under a microscope you should observe two things the, we should observe a cement paste and we should observe an aggregate phase so what i would like to tell you people is when you are talking about structure of hydrated cement we have we generally consider a concrete to be a two-phase material one is Paste phase means cement paste phase, one is aggregate phase. If we dig deeper, when you are observing under the microscope, uh, we can separately find uh, cement paste with fine aggregate. Uh, we can find uh, cement paste, we can find fine aggregate and we can find coarse aggregate. But when you are observing with your naked eye, we cannot uh, clear, we cannot see sand. Why? Because it is already mixed up with your cement, what we call motor. So we, when you are observing with your naked eye, you can see a motor phase and a coarse aggregate phase. This is what I would like to tell you people. 
uh, one has to remember about an important term called transition zone or interfacial transition zone uh, this is very much important this is nothing but it is a zone which exists in between the coarse aggregate uh, uh, and the cement paste so this is this could be observed only under a microscope it is how well the cement paste is binding the aggregate good is the binding good is the transition zone good is the strength and if the binding is not proper in between the aggregate and the cement paste or the cement mortar transition zone will be weaker and hence micro cracks may be developed so this is the complete transition chart uh, one has to rem i already talked about the box compounds there i told you about features of c3s c2s c3 and c4f so the first uh, one two hydrate is uh, our c3a then c4af will take place then the first seven days strength is always due to c3s how the first seven days strength came in c3s is reacting with water to form csh gel up to seven days the hydration will continue and during this time c2s will be dormant uh, after seven days uh, the hydration of c2s will start uh, so again c2s also reacts with water to form again csh gel so later on the strength will be there so one has to understand that see generally how do we test concrete we test concrete at uh, 7 days 14 days 28 days 56 days like this up to 7 days whatever you are trying to measure the strength of the concrete that is due to the hydration of c3s and after 7 days whether it could be 14 21 28 56 90 180 up to any duration that is all due to the hydration of c2s okay and a very little of c3s so this is all about hydration so i hope you understood the video thanks for watching